G'day, welcome to the Boomerang channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the design of boomerangs. I know it's a very, very big subject. The more you get into it, the more you realize there is to learn. I've picked up everything I could read on boomerang flight, why they return, why they don't return, how the shape of a boomerang affects its flight. I can't say that I understand everything that I've seen and read uh, because the physics of it is way beyond me. It's way beyond a lot of physicists for that matter. Um, there was a fellow called Hess, I believe, that said that boomerang flight is not rocket science. It's more complicated than rocket science. A shot to the moon doesn't involve as many different factors as a boomerang in flight. And I'll walk you through some of what I understand about it and, um, and how we can incorporate that into the design process. So here we go. Right, the first thing I want to discuss is center of gravity or center of rotation. Not necessarily the same thing because if you have weighted tips or if it is shaped in different ways, then the center of the mass of the boomerang isn't going to be easily definable. All right, so the way it rotates is not going to rotate necessarily around its center. Okay, here's some of the profiles that I've made up in the last 12 months. Masses of them, okay? And for each one, when I design it, I need to find the center of rotation because I need to work out how it's going to move through the air and what each of the surfaces, the aerofoils, if you like, are how each of those are going to affect its flight. So it's easy if you've got a profile like that. And I've got a hole drilled in the middle and it's in the center of rotation. Now see I've got this, uh, this uh, I don't know, set of concentric circles, chart if you like. Um, thanks to Victor Paulin for that, by the way. Um, what this represents is airflow, relative airflow to the surfaces relative to the center of rotation. So you can see if I put a three bladed one, symmetrical three bladed one on the center there, all right, and, and I'm throwing that through the air that way, it's spinning that way. So relative, in very simple terms, relative to that rotation, you can see these arrows on these concentric circles, they're going that way. This is for a right hander, obviously. You can see the way the wind will be flowing across that, that surface area. See how the, that will be my leading edge. This will be my trailing edge. And the same thing with this, this side as it rotates. That's a very simplistic view of it. And I'll explain why in a minute. Problem is, I mean, what you can do and what a lot of boomerang makers do is they, they work out their balance point, so they get something like that, profile like that, and they, they work out a balance point, and they mark that there and there, and then they do another balance point that way, mark it there and there, and they look where the lines intersect, and they graph it out on a piece of paper, and they go, right, I'll put my center of rotation around about there. It's kind of a way of doing it, but you'll find that in flight, the center of rotation isn't necessarily like that. And I've done the experiment whereby I have, after measuring a, a profile very accurately, marked it out 
painted the boomerang with concentric circles like that across the boomerang and watch as it flows, as it flows through the air, it, it doesn't inscribe a circle to your eye. And as it comes down in the hover, you can't, you can't see a circle, it, it's lopsided. So my centre of rotation isn't my centre of balance in those cases. So we have a problem. What do we do when we've got a traditional boomerang shape, like when well, most of these are semi-traditional, this isn't. How do I find the centre of rotation for that in real life? So here's how. So here we are back in my secret lab <laughs> with my high-tech simulator that I made up. All right. This is one of my greatest fans. See I've removed the fan blade and replaced it with a disc so I can work out concentric circles just like that so there I place my boomerang my profile on and I just roughly estimate it's about there because I've got this is a long arm short arm style of boomerang hook style boomerang so I reckon it'll be it won't be in the center there I reckon it'll be off center and because I've got this elbow built up there I reckon it'll be about there so there's my guesstimate I spin it around doesn't matter which way I spin it if the weight is balanced, it should be okay. So I'll turn on the fan, and it flies off, okay? So the next stage is, I try to work out which way it went when it, when it flew off, when it went, whether it went in towards the center or out away, right or left, and I'll try again. Now, it's moved more in towards the center, so it started out there and it went in, so I know that I've started in too close with that one so I move it out a little bit and I try it again okay that would be the direction this right hand of boomerang will be spinning in see it's come into the center and it's come across this way so I move my relative center of gravity out there Mark the top, make a registration mark. So once I've got it, now I've got it where I want it, I can see that there's a lot more overhang on that long arm. And I've marked it with a pencil. So now that I know, I can put that out on tracing paper or whatever, and I, I know where my center of rotation is. Now you see these lines here? these concentric circle lines you can see the direction and path of the airflow over the wing tip All right and you can see because they're smaller concentric circles there will be less airflow around this area here so this isn't as vital as what's happening out here there's faster airflow going over that tip than there is out here and you can see what's happening on this pronounced elbow. That's going to have a slight effect, slight, slightly more effect, that pronounced elbow, than if it was more curved around. Because, because I've got airflow flowing diagonally across this elbow here. Okay. So that's, that's the direction of spin. So this is my leading edge, my relative airflow. This is my leading edge here, my relative airflow is going that way. Leading edge, trailing edge. So with that in mind, I think about shaping 
my boomerang now.